Welcome to Spiritual Basics Podcast with April and Jen, a bi-monthly podcast designed to teach the searchers, seekers, and spiritually curious the basics of metaphysics and new thought. They are all about the basics, but they are not basic bitches. Now, here are your hosts, April Dali and Jen Merkel. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Spiritual Basics Podcast with April and Jen. I am Jen Merkel. I am a transformational life coach and a certified hypnosis practitioner. You can learn about what I do and book a free consultation at my website, jenmerkelhypnosis.com. And I'm April Darley. I'm an emotional strength and confidence coach, and you can find out all about what I do at aprildarley.com. Here at Spiritual Basics Podcast, we love our listeners and we appreciate all of those who follow us and subscribe on all our various channels. And if you don't, please do. We are a non-monetized podcast, so any support you can give us is truly appreciated. So today we have something so exciting and extremely special. We have the one and only Karen Kay from the UK, who is going to be talking to us about fairies and manifesting with the fairies. So exciting. Yeah, I'm totally fangirling because (laughs) I was first introduced to Karen many years ago through a group I did called Fairyologist. So Doreen Virtue did Fairyologist for a while and it was her fairy education group. But when she decided to leave that, everybody was asking, who do we go to for fairies now? And Karen Kay was the clear winner. She is everything about the fairies. In fact, her nickname is the fairy lady or the fairy and mermaid whisperer. So it just doesn't get any better than that. And I have followed Karen's career through Hay House UK, and she's quite popular in the UK. You Mm -hmm. may not know her yet in the US, but that will be changing both with our podcast day and some great things she has in the works. So If you want to find out more about Karen, let me just fill you in on some of the amazing things that she has already done so far. She's the creator and editor-in-chief of Fae Magazine, that's F-A-E, and it stands for Fairies in Enchantment. She writes a column for the UK magazine Soul in Spirit, which is a fabulous magazine. And she's got two Oracle decks that are published through Hay House UK. So the Oracle of the Fairies, which she published in October 2019. And Jen, you have that deck. Yes, it's gorgeous. I love it. It is. Yes. So I I was blown away by it. It's The imagery is so beautiful. And then the newest one is Messages from the Mermaids, which came out in June 2020. Karen also has the Three Wishes Fairy Festival that's held in Cornwall every year. And she's been a guest on ITV's This Morning, which is like the UK's version of Good Morning America. So it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. She's also been a speaker at the Hay House World Summit, and she's dedicated to educating others about fairies. So now here joining us is the wonderful and beautiful and lovely Karen Kay. Welcome so much, Karen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here talking with you today. First, tell us about your background with fairies. How did you get started working with fairies? I, well, working, I suppose, in the last, oh, um, (laughs) oh, it goes quite a long time ago, around I think late 1990s, um, mid 1990s, but I first uh, started connecting with the fairies when I was a little girl, but I wasn't kind of professionally working with them at that Mm. point, but that was my first introduction to them. Um, Working, I started doing events in the middle of 90, I think it was 1995. And then I think there was one fairy stall and then my connection just grew and grew. And then I'm here now. So there's (laughs) there's a lot that's happened in between. But yeah, yeah, kind of mid late 90s. And how did you first like, how did you connect with the fairies? How did you first connect with them? Well, that would have been when I was a young child and uh, my parents separated, they divorced and I went to live with my grandmother in a place called Charlton in South London, which is right where the um, 
the Maritime Museum is actually, and okay. there's the line which is where Greenwich Mean Time is is founded on. So it was okay. quite near to there. I don't know why I've said that, but um, that's just come through. <laughs> but yeah, she was a really avid gardener and she loved, she was always in the garden. And so I just remember my memory, most of my memories from her, my early memories were just being in the garden at her feet because I was obviously little and she'd be pruning the roses. There were so many roses and she was really into oh. the natural, beautiful, mm. fragrant roses. So they were very, oh, just lovely and the petals would fall and I would gather them up and put them in a little pot and then I'd add water and I'd mash them all up and I I believed I was making perfume for the flower fairies uh it was actually rose water and every night I would leave it out in the garden and every morning I'd go and check and it would be gone so as far as I was concerned the fairies were enjoying my little gift that I was giving to them and I would see little lights kind of um little pricks of light that's the only way I can describe it um and it was very natural to me it did, I didn't question it because when you're a little child your ego's not fully engaged so right. so you're you're more receptive more open and you don't really question things it, it was a natural occurrence and then as I came into my teenage years I I didn't know if there was something wrong with me. So I went to the opticians <laughs> to get a test. <laughs> I didn't say, I think I'm seeing fairies. I just said, oh, can you just check my eyes out? And um, and they said I had 20-20 vision. So that for me confirmed that what I was seeing was fairies. I don't know why I knew it was fairies and not angels, because mm. kind of further down the line, I know that the angelic lights present as sure. a mm. larger, slower, more pulsing type of energy. And these the fairy lights are da dancing and darting around in very vibrant colours. Um, so, yeah, that was my first connection when I started really connecting with them. It happened very naturally. What an amazing story. So do you have a specific fairy or like a fairy guide that you like to work with on a regular basis? Um, no, actually, I don't have a regular one. I have a whole heap of fairies. I'm sure oh. they don't want to be called a heap, a, a flock of fairies. <laughs> a <troop>? call them. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to offend any of my fairy friends. Uh, there are so many that come in with different energies at different times for different reasons. Um, the main way that I perceive them tends to be telepathically so I'll kind of hear them telepathically I'll sense them and another way over the last few years that they've start started presenting themselves to me is through fragrance and that they normally come in with the smell of um, toffee apples oh okay yeah very sweet and and it's like very often I'll just be somewhere and this fragrance this scent is really delicious and it's very <laughs> uplifting and um it's like that's their calling card for me I know mm -hmm. they, they'll come in with different um ways to connect with people uh, but for me they come in with that I love it so what are some common misconceptions about fairies because there's a lot of legends and lore and especially in the magical community some people are like yes let's work with fairies and others are like don't you dare right yeah so can you tell us more about that? Yeah, certainly. I personally feel that fairies have had a very, not a great PR over the years. And, and with no disrespect to any group or anyone at all, the, the church did demonize fairies. And so instead of viewing them and, and looking at them as the beautiful guardians of nature, which is what they are primarily, their, their nature, I don't really like to say nature angels because they're definitely not angels. They're not angelic, uh, but there is a connect. There can be a connection with angels, but they're, they're fairies. They're a completely different being nature spirits, spirits of nature, guardians of the land. And they were demonized by the church so that people became fearful of them and and didn't really treat them very respectfully. And I think that has carried on and distorted through time. Now, yes, fairies, because they're close to the earth, they do have 
egos, not exactly the same as us, but they definitely mm. have different individual personalities, the same in a similar way to humans. So, for example, I could meet you two and say, hey, you're really lovely. Or I could meet someone else and say, oh, I'm not quite sure, but I don't feel quite right. It's a gut feeling that you get when you meet people. Mm. And and it's very similar with fairies and some of them are mischievous. And usually that would be if they felt that you were being disrespectful to the land. And, and many people will just go traipsing into to some place in nature that might be a, a fairy known for fairy activity mm-hmm. and just walk in as if they own the place mm-hmm. when they don't. And so they might get tripped up. They might have an acorn fall on their head or anything might happen. <laughs> so they do have this mischievous energy. Um, I think there is some kind of darker energy in there, but, but it's not, I don't connect with those fairies, mm-hmm. that energy, the fairies that I'm connecting with are, of a kind of lighter, higher, more fun vibration. Mm -hmm. Um, They're very real. They're very earthy. They don't all look pretty, pretty with sparkles. Sometimes they'll be very earthy and and their bodies will be made of leaves and twigs and Mm -hmm. things like this because they're shapeshifters. They're magical creatures. Mm -hmm. Some, you know, people do exercise caution and I think it's good to be respectful with any being otherworldly being that that you're working with Mm -hmm. and to just approach with respect and and also know that fairies even though they're magical and they can grant wishes Mm -hmm. they're not there for our beck and call Mm -hmm. they're there primarily as guardians of the earth and if we form a friendship with them a bond with them then we can work with them to actually manifest things within our human realm so as far as deliberately working with fairies, how might a fairy help us? In what way would they be working with us toward what type of goal? Okay, so usually what I would say, especially for somebody who hasn't worked with fairies before, is you you can manifest with them and, and you can kind of manifest pretty much anything as long as they are willing to meet you halfway and you're willing to meet them halfway. Usually I would say that it's best to wish for something that is for the highest good of everybody and not a kind of selfish thing. I mean, you could wish for a car in a practical way, like I need a car, I've got to get from A to B. Um, It doesn't have to be a top of the range Ferrari or whatever, (laughs) but just something to get me from A to B. I mean, I can't specify what anybody's individual wish would be, but for Mm -hmm. example, you could wish for that and they could help kind of open doors that will bring it to you. So for example, somebody might say, hey, my friend's mum's selling a car and they wondered if you would like it or we get we've got a new car we've upgraded and just be receptive and open to things happening in magical ways you are the one thing I do know and it I mean I'm saying I know and I'm getting lots of tingles as as I'm saying this so I'm not sure if I do you're not (laughs) likely to wake up one day and find a golden pumpkin carriage outside your home that's (laughs) Mm -hmm. not really likely to happen although anything is possible (laughs) so it is about working in conjunction with them so if you want to manifest something then you meet them halfway it's like a partnership and and just say you you talk to them as you would a person in a respectful way either in your mind or out loud and show them that you love and respect nature as much as they do because that is the thing that will form the bond the love of nature and the caring for nature what are some other ways that we might show that to the fairies like what can we do to attract fairies and you know kind of show them that that is important to us Yeah, I think, well, one of the very simple things that you can do is if you've got a garden or even a patio, or if if you're in an upstairs apartment, you could put something on your windowsill in the flat or whatever, um, a little welcome sign. You see them like fairies are welcome here, Mm -hmm. or you could put a little gnome figurine or a fairy figurine or something that 
is is an immediate sign that they're welcome and once they know they're welcome they will initially probably be curious although let me just say if possible if you do have access to an outside area I would always say do that first because if you invite the fairies into your home then much like when we set up this call, little things like computers and things, you know, they, they play, they're playful beings. Right. <laughs> and so little things could start maybe moving around or just, um, I wouldn't recommend it if you're only just starting out working with fairies. So probably it's best to do something outside or outside your front door. You could put a little fairy door in the garden or mm-hmm. something like this. I don't recommend fairy doors in the home. And I have been berated by some fairy door manufacturers about that. But I just don't, you know, because I work mm-hmm. with fairies, I don't think it's a good idea initially until you're mm-hmm. more familiar with working with them. Uh, The other things that you can do to show your love and appreciation for nature is to pick up litter, pick up trash and and do things um, that show them in a a real practical, physical way that you care about the environment. Also, um, using environmentally friendly household products. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple thing to do. So not the harsh chemicals, exchanging those for more mm-hmm. gentle, environmentally friendly ones. Um, I think that's it. And just you can just um, maybe create a little fairy garden dedicated to them within your own garden, ideally. And and just it's about just being open and calling to them in your heart, either out loud or in your mind and just say, fairies, fairies, please come to me. I wish to connect with you. And and then they'll start checking you out. Or they'll scan you. And um, if they feel like you're on a, you know, receptive on that same vibration, then they can very well draw close. But remember, they have free will. So if they don't want to come, they won't come. If they're not there as our servants or our little genies or anything you know (laughs) it has to be their free will right so other than fairy doors inside the home are there other things that we should avoid when working with the fairies um oh I don't know I mean and that is just my personal stance about the fairy doors in the home because I know lots of people do and and mm-hmm. I certainly do but they're they've been in with my home for a long time so <laughs> there's no way because once you let them in they're not really gonna go so and mm-hmm. and that was something that I realized it's like once you open yourself to working with them they're so excited to have an ally in the human realm who can Mm -hmm. do things that they can't physically do. And if you're receptive to that, then they're not going to go. So that's the only reason. I don't think it's anything ominous, but remember that fairy doors are portals. They're portals Mm -hmm. to another realm. And so when you've creating a a conscious portal within your home, then maybe, you know, you'd need to put protection around it because anything could come through energetically. So it's just wise to be a little bit cautious with that. Um, There's not really anything else that I can think of consciously not to do, except do not disrespect nature. Mm -hmm. The old legends would be never disrespect the fairies as in insult them or yeah yeah definitely and and um and there are also sayings some people say never thank a fairy and then other people say True. always thank the fairies and someone will say <laughs> leave a bit of chocolate and someone will say never leave chocolate that you know it's right. all I feel if you're going to leave a gift for a fairy as a sign of respect or thanks then make sure that it is organic and biodegradable And yes, Mm -hmm. they do have a tendency for sweet things. They do connect to that. I mean, and I know that now from experience through them coming in with this Mm -hmm. toffee apple scent. They love sweetness. Um, And also, if you're eating outside and suddenly everything starts to taste a bit bland they can actually energetically take the the energy Mm -hmm. out of the food so um that's something to look out for as well so it's always wise to just leave something aside all the other thing that you can do for them is um they're very connected obviously with nature so birds and little animals feed the birds that's a way of showing appreciation to the fairies also Mm -hmm. because they they're they can be seen and they connect with with the birds too very nice 
aside from consciously working with them and asking them to be around us in our home life, not just in our home, but in our area, where else might we find fairies? I mean, I know like you can walk in nature and things, but how could we, if we're like, let's say I wanted to go to a park and just walk around and connect with the fairies, are there certain places I should look or certain things I should do or how would you what kind of advice would you give for that okay so I feel when when I'm I can only ever really speak from my own experience as well because that as you said earlier there's so much written down about fairies and everybody's different experiences so anything that I share here it is from my own personal experience of course yes and I feel that or from what I've experienced is that the wilder a place is, the less, the more untouched it is by human hands, the more likely it would be a place where fairies would reside. Having said that, um, they, you can have urban fairies much in the same way that you can have urban foxes. So because they, they're, they can change and they can come in into urban places. But when you're outside, I would say just gravitate and trust, let your, your gut be your guide, really your instinct and go to where there are wilder type of areas within a park or an outdoor place. Um, You'll just feel that instinctively. And that's where they're likely to reside because they do tend to, um, not be too close to humans if they can help it unless they know that they're trustworthy humans because of the impact that we we have on the environment and when I say we I mean generally I know collectively yes yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's really great I love that you talked about the urban fairies because I live in a city and I know many of our listeners Mm -hmm. do and I'm wondering like are there fairies near me I mean personally I do know that there are but a lot of people might not realize, you know, you live in a city or you might live in a high rise or even an apartment building where there's a lot of concrete in the area and there's not a lot of natural setting, but you know, some of the tips that you've given as far as bringing fairies, you know, onto your patio, I've got a really nice patio. And as soon as the weather gets nicer, I'll have some more plants out there. And I definitely want to build a fairy garden, just a little small one. But is there anything else you can think of that might help for people like me who live in a not so natural area? Yes. Well, the other thing that I I was going to say earlier that I forgot, so thank you for asking me, is to they will come around potted plants so if you don't have access to a garden if you are in an apartment then bring in a potted plant because every single living thing that grows every plant every flower every tree has a fairy energy with it so you will naturally attract there there will be a guardian of that particular plant and and that's a way to bring them in having living nature living natural things within your natural living environment lovely one of your many accomplishments regarding fairies is your fairy festival this is something that i just recently learned about and it sounds so amazing to me now are you planning to have one in 2021 do you know whether you might well it is booked it's booked for june midsummer okay however in our current um (laughs) unstable not knowing what's going on in within the uk certainly at the moment and worldwide um i'm not sure yet but it at this moment in time of talking to you it is booked it's booked with the um, park owners where we hold it. And where is that usually um, held then? At a place called Mount Edgecombe Country Park, which is right on the edge of Cornwall in the UK, which is where I live. It's on the edge of Cornwall and where Devon begins. So it's literally on the border. Okay. And it's just a really beautiful um it's an area of outstanding natural beauty so it's full of fairies and lots of very old um tree specimens and plants and things like this and it's just really gorgeous there so i'm hoping that uh it will happen in june but if it doesn't happen in june then i'll kind of i think we've all got to be flexible with these things at the moment so i'm i'm open to it moving a little bit but i really would like it to happen the intention is there 
So it is just a matter of seeing what the powers of be will <laughs> will want. <laughs> and I have thought about taking it online, but I personally I'm in two minds about that because it just won't be the same. Right. You know, you cannot be gathering in person on the land, having your bare feet on the land or shoes or right. whatever, just being in nature with lots of other like minded and like hearted people. You can't beat that. So I'm not sure if it would convert online Mm -hmm. however I could possibly do some of the workshops online from the speakers that come in a typical fairy festival (laughs) in an in-person one what kinds of things happen at the fairy festival okay so the vision behind it and this was very much inspired by the fairies uh imagine you are going to a normal festival but it's in fairyland so you're going to have a a market area which are like stalls booths and everything will be somehow connected to fairies whether it's um art or clothing or hair sparkles or glitter any anything at all connected to the element we'll, we'll say elemental because then that covers the whole genre if you like so it's not just limited to fairies fairies are part of the elemental realm of which there are many different beings and um there is a normally two at least two sometimes three music stages a main one and then an undercover one and then a more smaller stage that is for poetry and more acoustic music and then we have big bands that usually it's kind of celtic celtic inspired music and and some of it is directly inspired by fairies as well and then there are there are literally over a hundred workshops and talks throughout the course of the three-day festival that run in a a little um not a little a a tent a marquee and and that can range from learning about fairies to uh fairy dance or fairy crafts or anything at all that's connected and um and everything the one thing for me is and it's family friendly as well so I want families to be able to connect with fairies and and not for it just to be exclusively for women or a certain age group it's everybody is welcome as long as they come in peace that that's the only rule come in peace and you're welcome and um and what I found is that you get generations I've had like three generations that the grandmother the mother and the daughter all coming and it's so lovely it it just attracts anybody who has an interest now not everybody who comes to the festival believes in them a lot of people do but when they come even people and it's usually the guys that if they come they've not been before they can be a little bit skeptical but I pretty much guarantee 99 and a half percent of the time they can come in skeptical in their normal attire and they'll all leave with face pain and (laughs) some flamboyant clothing and and they'll just kind of it just kind of brings out your inner child and it it's three days and nights of celebrating fairies celebrating the land celebrating the connection between people and and it's just a really it feels even more special now and it makes me quite emotional because we had to cancel last year's well postpone it and um yeah I think when something's taken away you value it more we've been doing it since 2007 so it's been going quite a long time wow we want to go yeah, it sounds lovely. I have to start Yay. manifesting with my fairies and see if uh, they can help me to get there. Because oh, that it... would be great. Well, you can both come as my guests if you do. If you can oh, get here. thank you. <laughs> <That's> so sweet. <laughs> yeah, for it's well, yeah. Right now, there are a lot of obstacles to traveling to the UK for yeah. sure. But you know, we all know this is temporary, and at some point, yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. So, Karen, I believe you also have some music that you do. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I have created some fairy music with um, Michael Tingle, and we've created an album called Enchanted, which is totally inspired by fairies. 
And then a few years later, we have done another album called Through the Fairy Portal. And this particular album is um, very interesting because I am related to a poet called Walter Delamere, who you may or may not be familiar with. And he used to write about fairies and mermaids and magical things and I never met him but my uncle used to spend time with him um we're going back a long long time (laughs) and I believe he was the poet laureate at one point as well Walter Delamere okay and and I by the way that name literally turned out literally translate to of the sea so it's so natural that he would have to do with mermaids and fairies It, yeah, and again, I've got tingles going through me now. So, yeah, and that is my um, mother's maiden name, Delamere of the Sea. Lovely. And so it makes total sense because I see myself as, I what I always say is half fairy, half mermaid, half human. I know it's three <laughs> halves, it. but I, math <laughs> was never my forte. <laughs> but um, I feel like an equally strong connection to the land and the sea. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, with Through the Fairy Portal, the album, Walter literally, I just channeled him in this, it, through music because he was a poet, but his poetry describes magical fairy scenes so eloquently mm-hmm. and and it paints a picture in your mind and and I just felt and Michael and I we both felt that we wanted to express this in a musical way so there was some real magic that came through that magical music I would say and um yeah I would urge I mean people can listen to the clips and that is on fairymusic.com but that's the Celtic spelling of fairy music so it's f-a-e-r-i-e music.com okay. and and they can listen to to um, some free clips on there and uh, just to get a flavor of that because it's something that's very special to my heart and that's what I am before everything else actually I'm a singer I'm a musician before everything else that I do and if someone wanted to download the music where would they find that well, it is available to download from fairymusic.com, but actually you'll find it on most download sites, you know, wherever you can buy music, it will be. But um, if they go through fairymusic.com, then that will have all the links on there as well. Wonderful. Great. That's exciting. So Karen, please, we would love if the fairies have a messages for us. Could you use one of your lovely decks, your fairy oracle that you have through Hay House and pull a card for us? I will. I will pull a card from Oracle of the Fairies. And- Which, by the way, is a lovely, lovely deck. I have the deck and it's beautiful art, but beautiful messages as well. Highly recommend it. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, the artist, Ginger Kelly, is... Um, a multimedia artist so uh the the images are very alive and um it's been really oh we've got uh <laughs> the fairy queen of light has come out to Ooh. shine her light on nice. us and everybody listening at any time whether they're listening on replay or way way into the future so um this message is timeless and the fairy queen of light comes in to shine her beautiful light over all of us and to say that when there are shadows on our path, she comes to illuminate them. And, oh, I'm just feeling the energy now. So (laughs) excuse me, it can be a bit overwhelming sometimes in the sense that it can distract me from talking (laughs) when I'm feeling this um, beautiful uh, energy coming in. And, And she's shining her light on our future as well as our present and just saying the future is bright it will change nothing stays the same and even though it might feel like this is it forever we're you know it's Mm -hmm. it won't be things always change like the ebb and flow of the tides like clouds floating by in the sky nothing stays the same so this worldwide situation will not endure it will change it will get better 
and she's just coming in to shine her light for all of us to to remind us of this and to keep this light in our heart and and let that be our guide as we do move forward into the future that's a lovely Love message it. and very timely for what we've been through collectively but even for me personally that that really spoke to me so thank you so much for that thank really you appreciate it so oh, lovely. it's a pleasure it's a pleasure so Karen, if someone wanted to work with you either for reading or for speaking engagement or anything, what is the best way to get in touch with you? Well, the kind of portal of, of where all of my links are and contacts would be my personal website, which is karenk.co.uk. And that's K-A-R-E-N-K-A-Y dot co dot U-K. And from there, there's all of my social media links and media links if if anybody wanted to work with me, either for a reading or for a speaking engagement. Um, I'm on pretty much every social media platform as I've got the same name, which is great, which is Karen K. Fairy. And it's the traditional, not the traditional fairy, but the the common spelling, which is F-A-I-R-Y. The American everyone... spelling. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, it's, the, it's the common one that most people know, but I do also work with the Celtic spellings as well, mm-hmm. but not for this. So it's Karen K. F-A-I-R-Y. And that's on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Uh, And YouTube, I've got my own YouTube channel as well. And for as a help for our listeners, I will drop the links in the description for this episode. So they'll be able to just click on it and get there. Thank you. Well, thank you again so much for joining us, for enlightening us about fairies. And it's been lovely to talk to you. So wonderful. You have such an amazing, loving, kind energy, and it's so nice to bring that into our space. So thank you for sharing with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, It's really, really my pleasure. And it's just gone, it's flown by, hasn't it? Like the time just goes, it it goes by so quickly. (laughs) And and likewise, the energy that's coming from both of you is really beautiful and uplifting and And thank you for doing what you're doing because you're shining your light out into the virtual world, aren't you? And sharing your podcasts. And and it's a real privilege for me to be a part of this as well. And I'm very grateful. Thank you so much. Well, thank you to also to our listeners for all their support and for listening to us. If you know someone who might enjoy our podcast, please share it with them. You can find us at spiritualbasicspodcast.com. Thank you everyone for joining us. Until next time. This has been Spiritual Basics Podcast with April and Jen. Find full episodes on your favorite listening platform or visit spiritualbasicspodcast.com.